the hair, anatomy and physiology for the beauty industry. In our industry, there are many reasons why a client might come to us for a treatment relating to hair. It could be regular hair removal, waxing, tweezing, hair tinting, eyelashes, eyebrows, or to ask for advice regarding treatments to target unsightly hair growth, for instance facial hair removal due to hormonal imbalances in the endocrine system. The purpose of hair. Hair has many functions, such as keeping us warm, alerting us to danger, goosebumps make your hair stand on end, and protecting us from bacteria and foreign particles. Eyelashes help to bat invaders away from your eyes, Eyebrows trap sweat and liquids if they run down your forehead and your ears and nose have fine hairs at the entrance to trap foreign particles that try to enter the body. If you are ill, malnourished or lacking in vitamins and minerals, then your hair may look dull, lifeless and grow at a different rate. Hormone imbalances are an incredibly common reason for hair growth disorders. In our industry, we can make a real difference to the confidence of a client suffering from a hormone-related growth issue by offering a variety of solutions. Vellus hair type. The body is almost totally covered in tiny fine hairs called vellus hairs. They are usually soft and barely visible due to their lack of pigment. It can be a genetic reason or a hormone imbalance that can lead to these becoming darker and more noticeable. In beauty, this can often be on the sides of the face where clients request hair removal. Terminal hair type. Terminal hair is the hair we have on our head, legs, arms, underarms and pubic area. The length can vary from person to person, as can the colour. These hairs are deep-rooted, unlike vellus hair, which has a shallow follicle. Outside hair structure. Hair, like nails, is an appendage of the skin. This means that it is a structure found within the skin, sweat glands are too, and... Like nails, it is not alive. Imagine the pain of a haircut if it was. Hair is made of keratin, a protein, and has three parts. The bulb, which is the base of the hair. The matrix is situated at the base of the bulb and is where cells grow and mitosis, cell division, occurs. The dermal papilla is situated in the skin at the bulb, which provides a blood supply containing essential nourishment for growth. The root, which is below the surface of the skin, the shaft, which is the part of the hair that you can see on the skin's surface. Hair follicle. Within each follicle, the following is contained. The inner root sheath holds the hair within the follicle, growing with it. The outer root sheath forms the follicle wall. The connective tissue sheath supplies the follicle with nutrients. Inside the hair. If you cut a hair in half and looked at it under a microscope, you would see the three internal layers. The cuticle, which is the elastic outer layer of cells. The cortex, the middle section containing lots of pigmented keratinized cells. The medulla, the middle which has loosely packed keratinized cells. Stages of hair growth. Anagen, the active stage. This is when the hair grows and can last from months to years. It needs to receive nourishment from the bulb in order to do this. 90% of hairs are anagen at any one time. Catagen. The changing stage. This is the stage where hair transforms from active to resting and can last for weeks. In this stage, it receives nourishment from the follicle wall. Telogen, the tired or resting stage. At this stage, the hair can be shed and there may be a new replacement already beginning to grow at the base. The hair is resting in the follicle until it is stimulated to grow again. 10% of hairs are telogen at any one time.